Hey everyone, um, sorry for the lack of uploads, but to be honest with you, I don't know if I'm being punked or if this is the way spring is when it comes to San Francisco and the Bay Area, but ever since March, I haven't had a single clear night. Every single night, it's been looking like this, just clouds and clouds, so much so that I've even tarped up my, uh, my mount because... I haven't used it. I, I, I couldn't. So um, instead, I figure if I can't image, I'll take this downtime to finally do a video of one of my favorite telescopes. So stay tuned for that. At some point during your astrophotography journey, you may consider getting into a medium to large size refractor, but you also want to stay within the budget. Now, when I say the word budget, that doesn't mean cheap. It just means that you're being financially reasonable. So with that out of the way, I want to tell you all about my Astrotech AT115 EDT triplet apochromatic refractor. That's a mouthful. <laughs> so let's start with the brand first. You know, what is Astrotech? I think that if you're starting out in astrophotography or just astronomy in general, you would be familiar with some of the household names such as Orion, Mead, and the increasingly popular William Optics. But what about Astro, uh, Astrotech? Well, Astrotech is actually a brand offered by Astronomics, which sponsors the uh, forum Cloudy Nights. And you would have access to that, especially if you are from uh, North America. It's one of the most popular internet forum for astronomy and astrophotography. So Astrotech offer a wide variety of telescope, both for visual use and astrophotography use. Now my particular review will only center around the astrophotography aspect of it. And so with that, let's go take a look at the telescope. So I want to take a moment to talk about the specs of the Astrotech AT115 EDT triplet apochromatic refractor. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on paper specs because I don't think that's what astrophotography is about. I think that specs gives you an, an idea of its capability and what to expect, but I don't think specs ever tells a whole picture. But I think it's important that we talk about just a little of the specs. So as the name suggests, this has an aperture of 115 millimeters or 4.5 inches with a uh, F ratio of F7, giving you a focal length of 805 millimeters. Now this comes with a 2.5 inch rack and pinion focuser, which actually in my opinion is probably one of the best right out of the factory. Um, I don't think you would ever have to upgrade this focuser. And, and of course, this being a triplet, it has three elements to help really correct the uh, star colors and, any, you know, and control any chromatic aberrations. However, as far as the glass is concerned, this is using FK61 from a Chinese company called CDGM. Now I've done some research and FK61 is actually comparable to O'Hara's FPL51. So yes, you are using an older generation of glass, but I can tell you that the glass in this telescope works extremely well when it comes to correcting the colors. And with that, uh, we can move on to the next part of the video where you know we kind of go over who is this refractor for? I think when you're uh, purchasing a telescope, you should also consider its size as well. So I want to give you a comparison. Right now I have the Ducio fully extended, and this is how it compares to my William Optics Gran Turismo 81. So it's quite a bit larger. And also how it compares to my William Optics Space Cat 51. So as you can see, 
the AstroTech AT1580T. It's quite large. As a matter of fact, it's what I would call chunky. Now that I talked about some of the main specs of the AstroTech AT1580T, I want to go over who is this refractor for. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I think this is a great option for somebody who is trying to get into the medium to large size refractor. And this is also for somebody who is value minded. As far as you know, the types of object that you can image with this refractor, I think this is best used for smaller emission nebulae um, at a focal length of 805 millimeters, I think you can begin to start imaging some of the smaller uh, object in the night nice sky, such, such as the bubble nebula and uh, Thor's helmet. Now, can you image galaxies with this? Yes, you can. However, I will say that even at this focal length of 805, I don't think it's optimized for a majority of the galaxies because there's just, they're just too tiny. Uh, I personally think that you need to have closer to a thousand millimeters of focal length to start with when it comes to galaxies. Um, but I, overall, I think that this is a great option for somebody who wants to do more uh, nebulae imaging and who is value minded. So I'm gonna do my best to have a session tonight, but as you can tell, clouds are already rolling in and it's been like this for the past two, three, maybe even four weeks. Who knows, I've stopped counting. Um, I haven't had a session in a long time. So unfortunately, this may be a really dry review, but I hope you'll stick around. I want to feel the AstroTech AT1580T is an absolute joy to use. Um, now, let's go over a few things. Uh, from a user experience point of view, you have to remember that this is a medium to large size refractor. So therefore, it's going to have the weight and size to reflect that. And I always say, every single refractor that I've come across they always handle bigger and chunkier than they look on display and this is no exception however you see that i'm, I'm still able to mount this on my entry level skywatcher heq5 pro and my counterweight isn't all the way down to the uh, to the bottom of the bar yet so yes it's it's heavy because it's a medium to a large size refractor but it's not too heavy where you know, you have to start thinking about upgrading mounts. Um, now let's go on to the image quality and the optics. And I don't care what anyone says about the type of glass that they're using. Um, and you know, FPL 53, FPL 51, I'd like to know what's in my telescope. But other than that, I let the final image tell the story. Uh, I believe that you know, even when you're using older 
older generation glass, in this case, FK61, as long as they're produced and made it correctly into the telescope, you're going to get an, an amazing image. And I haven't been, I haven't been, been disappointed with this telescope. Um, as a matter of fact, I think some of my best images were taken with this uh, telescope. And I also want to talk about the focuser. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that this is probably one of the best focuser straight out of the factory. Um, I'm able to mount my cameras on it and I'm able to lock it. There's no droppage, there's no slippage. Um, the rack and pinion, the, the focuser is extremely smooth, precise. Uh, it's, it's just a joy to use um, and it's very reliable. Um, I've gone nights where, you know, if I were to pick up the session from a previous night, um, I would check my focus, but a lot of times I don't have to refocus because the focuser is that precise um, and the lock is that good you know it's it's, it's very replicable uh, from night in and night out so all in all you know between the optics and the build quality of this refractor um, I think that out on the field you're really going to enjoy this Astrotech AT 115 you know once I'm out here in the in my backyard taking pictures of the nice sky, I generally stop thinking about the specs of my equipment because there are other things that I need to focus on, such as getting the right focus, figuring out the test exposure, uh, framing my object correctly. So I, don't, I want to get equipment where once it's set up, I don't need to think about it. And most importantly, when I'm out here, the telescope is my connection to the universe and in order for it to do that the telescope has to be a pleasure to use and it has to be reliable and the Astrotech AT 115EDT accomplishes both of those things the craftsmanship is amazing and I already mentioned multiple times about the top-notch focuser you know once I set it I don't need to worry about it you know it's 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 very reliable and most importantly, you know, the image quality is just amazing. And I argue that for refractor of this size, 110 millimeters and up, I don't think there's another refractor that will give me a better image for the money. And to me, that's why this telescope is so special. It, it, it provides such an amazing value and ultimately I don't really need to think about it. It serves as my connection to the night nice sky and to me that's what a telescope is all about. You know it's not about the specs, it's about the connection to the universe. And with that I hope you all will have a good night and I'll see you next time. Until then, clear skies.